Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today we're back with the back pages. It's Sunday morning, we can do it properly. I've got my cup of tea behind the camera. I've got the new setup, got to be gradually getting there over time, of course. If you are new, or if you haven't seen yesterday's video, this is all about random to you, isn't it? We're somewhere else, we've moved out. This will all be getting sorted over the next couple of weeks, bear with me, but it doesn't stop the content from rolling. Today we're going to be looking through those newspapers, there are Covid cases everywhere. Celtic are in a horrible state. It's going to be a fried couple of weeks to say the least uh, as we head up to the Derby now on the 17th. It's nerve-wracking times, we don't know who's going to be available, who's fine, it, it's just really mad and it just makes me wish that there was no international break whatsoever but here we are, we've got to move on, we've got to hope for the best and uh, we'll take it on the chin but let's see what the back pages of those Sunday newspapers are saying today. <laughs> Right, Sunday Mail is where we're going to begin today, which actually has a piece on near Baton here on the front page, uh, referring to the back, of course, Celtic Star, Nears Virus Nightmare, and here we are on the back, near Beton looking rather gutted in the Israel game against Scotland. Beton's struck down as virus curse piles on Celtic's troubles, Nears Covid Nightmare. Uh, out, Ryan Christie will not be available for the match, doubt. Edward is still to be confirmed whether or not he can play in the match. So Celtic are just slowly moving on uh, with more COVID cases and, you know, more people are going to be missing this, this match against Rangers and it couldn't be timed worse. You know, even if we played Rangers uh, the following week, if we played them, you know, after this week, uh, returning from international football, we would probably be able to, to bring these guys back. But... Um, at the end of the day, that's, that's what's happened, you know, we can't cry about it, we can't make excuses, it's just the way of the world now, and yes, I, I do wish that the international football never went forward, and I do think that uh, in the world we're living in just now, the fact we're having international football is a bit of a shambles, um, but, you know, you've got all these guys mixing groups, you know, if they're sticking with their clubs, you know, they're going to be constantly mingling and constantly with the same group of 22, 23 guys. So why are we sending them all over the over the shop, over Europe, to go and mix with other people from other clubs? And, you know, when you're looking at the Scotland squad right there, if you take out Celtic and Rangers, there's like six or seven separate clubs involved with, with Scotland. So that's like another seven groups of 22 they're, they're mixing with. They could potentially mix uh, the COVID through. So... To have international football just now, I think it's a disastrous idea, but it's happened, we can't we can't cry about it, and we'll have to move on. And on, on the back page as well, before we talk more about near beats on, we've got Lee can fire us into the Euros. Carl McGregor has urged Celtic pal Lee Griffiths to get fit and firing in time for Scotland's day of destiny against Serbia. We need him back in the team. We lack a, a goal-scoring striker in Scotland's uh, lineup. We've got good players, let's not deny that, you know, we've got Shanklin who I think is going to be a future star for Scotland, we've got Kevin Nisbet as well who will be a future star for Scotland, I think Lyndon Dykes has shown real positives, McBurnley's still useless but, um, you know, we've got good players but Griffiths can be the one, Griffiths is the exact type of player that Scotland team needs, uh, we were very, very boring in the final third against Israel the other night and we needed someone like Griffiths up there and I feel like that's not a sentence I utter too much, of course I never really say it for Celtic, um, but here I am saying it now, Griffiths would be a, a marvellous addition into that team, you know, behind him we've got one of the best midfields I think the country has seen ever, uh, and the likes of McGinn, McGregor, Christie, McTominay, uh, Ryan Jack, all these players I think are, are one of the greatest generations of midfielders this national team has ever produced, so Griffiths playing ahead of them would be absolutely unreal, uh, and Carl McGregor quite rightly uh, urging him on to, to start scoring more goals for Celtic, which I'm sure we will see and we might need to rely on quite heavily heading into the derby at the weekend. Finally, on the back page we've got 2.7 million pounds for Stevie to keep Bongani Rangers will have to splash out 2.7 million pounds to sign Bongani Zungu if the South African impresses enough to win a permanent deal 2.7 million pounds quite a lot of money uh, in terms of Rangers especially next year it could be a damning year for Rangers if Celtic win 10 in a row but of course uh, they will be intending on uh, probably spending that money with the hype that's been built around this guy I've never seen him play but Rangers fans very very happy uh, I can confirm within the coronavirus chaos at Celtic uh, over the near beat on Ryan Christie odds on Edward situation uh, Abd El Ahmed is in the clear he can play it's been confirmed in here uh, that he will be okay 
Uh, obviously, he must have been identified uh, as one of the players who were in close contact with Nier Beton. I'm not too sure how all that works. You'd imagine he would be in close contact with Nier Beton, but apparently not. Uh, the article goes on to say, uh, Millsport Mil understands Beton's hoops teammate Hatem Abdel Ahmed hasn't been identified as a close contact and will play for Israel in our Nations League games against the Czech Republic and Slovakia this week. So, I believe they work in small groups. They stay together in their kind of wee cliques. And, but then at the end of the day, they're walking down the same tunnel, they're, 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 they're um, sharing the same changing room, I think. Uh, I'm not too sure how it all works, but uh, apparently Abdel Ahmed will be fine, and if he manages to avoid it for the rest of the break, that's good, he'll be available to play against Rangers, and that will be massively important. I've got a lot of pieces on Scotland and the national team. Uh, Ryan Christie, a big piece on him, big piece on Stevie Clark, and then we've got the man himself, the voice of experience, to finish off talking about the mail today, we've got our big Hugh Keevans piece, and you'll love to see it, and you'll love to see Hugh Keevans, and I, I know a lot of people judge Hugh Keevans, a lot of people don't like Hugh Keevans, I personally love him, but here we are. Two teams would start a fight in an empty stadium, but old fun battle could come down to the scrap between two skippers. So James Tavernier, Scott Brown, the two skippers, uh, saying that you know uh, he thinks it could come to uh, a wee scrap between them. I've actually got it uh, spread across the two pages, one on the floor, one here. So excuse me for looking down, but Brown can be derby key for virus hit Celtic, believes Hugh Evans. And look, I think if Scott Brown turns up on the day, has his best sort of football. Uh, he definitely can make an impact in that game but Hugh Evans, the voice of experience of course uh, uh, and, and, and do you know what, will the game go forward? We need to wait and see I have a feeling it still could get called off I've got a week to go now um, uh, and you know, if more cases come in to, towards both teams then I don't see why it would go forward but I hope it does uh, because I want to get over and done with and I want to see us get the three points against our rivals but let's move on to the last paper of the back pages today Final one today, we're going to go with the Daily Star, they had no Sunday Post, and the back page are a cracking photo of Beaton crying there, potentially a background worthy photo you could say. Uh, Celtic rage as Beaton comes back with Covid, the club are concerned. Celtic say they are concerned and frustrated by the number of Covid issues hitting the club in the international break after Nier Beaton returned a positive test. There's really yesterday became the latest Hoops player to be ruled out of Saturday's clash against Rangers with Ryan Christie already signed late after being identified as a close contact of coronavirus hit Armstrong at Scotland's training camp. Uh, and obviously Edward having to isolate just now as well. It is uh, a sick enough to say the least, it really is. It's not what I expected of this inter uh, international break. Of course there was a lot of scepticism uh, surrounding the, the, the safety and the health of the players going all over Europe and mixing with these guys. But I, I assumed that these guys would come back fine and I guess that is that sort of mindset that a lot of us take a lot of the times that these guys are superheroes and that nothing happens to them and everything's bright and rosy. It's, it's not. These guys are now missing out in what is going to be the biggest game of the season to this point in a game which is going to be very telling uh, come the end of the season. This could really set the tone for both teams depending which way... The, the result goes, it could swing either way and both teams could, could feel the impact of, of whatever happens. And now we're missing half our team, man. Well, no half the team, let's not exaggerate, but you know what I mean. It is annoying. Griff can be Euro's hero, the same piece in here about Callum McGregor urging on. Uh, bubble Jeopardy, Steve Clark, you look at other nations and think it won't happen to us. But it did, exactly what I was saying there. You do look at it you go, oh, it's happening over there, but it's not going to happen here, it's not going to happen with us. And, and it does, it really hits hard, it, it kind of uh, gets you when you least expect it. It was, un it was very surprising when it did come out that Edward was, was there and... Uh, and everybody else. And then a lot of pieces on the Betfred Cup, which obviously took place over the weekend there. A lot of uh, good results. Kevin Nisbet scoring once more. Surely a guy who is going to be in the Scotland team sometime soon. Uh, you'd expect him to be in there. I don't know why he's not uh, in the first place, but him scoring again, uh, you know, there's a lot of good results in there. Betfred Cup group stages will be continuing or, uh, over the, the next while but um, it's going to be a, a good laugh to say the least when we can get back to cup football ourselves and, and hopefully go forward for another treble but we'll wait and see anyway that does it for the back pages today of course a quick round up it's all dominated by Nier Beton and his, his case of the old Rona uh, I think I held up the wrong thing there I did hold up the wrong thing I held up the TV magazine there we go Nier Beton dominating the pages 
Um, and hopefully we just get more word over the next week of who's good, who's not good, and and, and what the the, the, the the protocol is moving forward. But we'll see. If you have enjoyed, make sure that like and subscribe. It is very much appreciated. Bear with me while everything changes in here. It would uh, it'd be nice if you used to do that, you know, just bear with. But aye, I'll see you all next time.